there's a process by which you go through and identify that so on. And so those 163 persons out of 21,000 last year, there will be clear justification and the information. What are some of the reasons that might have uh, prevented those folks from being able to practice that? Uh, one of the things, but somebody might be refused because they might have been deported for some criminal activity, and they may turn up with a false passport. They may turn up with, um, you know, so a person who was deported, for example, um, is asked to stay out of the country for a very specific period of time, or you might have found somebody who might have come in and overstayed, and and you know, on more than one occasion, and, and so they're very sensitive. A number of things, but I can tell you they're all justified. But I hope that we don't get hung up on 163 or 20 something when we are talking about job commission, which is exploring a number of attractive opportunities. And that is my concern. That we, there's so much that we can talk about. That I hope that your story, you said with your aunt, Chronicle, will not focus on our 63 people and do not look at all the excellent opportunities that we're talking about for young people. Education, training, tourism. We won't focus on our residents. Let me just add that uh, we have not had any reports at the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In other words, if someone felt that they were unjustifiably denied entry, that they would seek redress, um, which in the past used to uh, be the, the norm. And so uh, we haven't had anyone coming to the Foreign Ministry to ask us to seek redress. Um, so um, that I think that we have established a consulate general in Barbados and appointed a consul general. And uh, ever since that uh, establishment, we have seen a marked improvement in terms of dealing with some of these immigration matters. Needless to say, the consulate general is not there just to deal with those matters, but also to promote trade and investment, more people to people contact. And what this MOU would do is basically put in writing what we do right now uh, with uh, the uh, Barbadian authorities. And I think can serve as an example for the region as well in how we can document the processes in dealing with some of these matters. There are a number of areas of collaboration that we thought possible, of course, and there's the intention to conclude a memorandum of understanding uh, which should give collaboration, uh, indication of how we can collaborate rather between our countries. Uh, we also recognize that as we seek to facilitate the, the development of the tourism sector in Ghana and also to broaden the experiences of our visitors, Barbados being a a mature destination that we see the twinning of our, our destinations as a very rich, um, which offers a set of a very rich potential for our prospective visitors and our repeat visitors. We know that there's an increasing interest in heritage tourism, in ecotourism, and generally tourists are looking for newer and, and more um, rich experiences and we see that there's significant potential. Uh, we do have the, the some clear connections etc and therefore that is something to be pursued. In looking at that the strategy of course would be to bring together service providers and in the first instance to work out some packages to, to in essence test the market and undertake some pilots. Of course, if we are talking about enhancing tourism and hospitality, while we know that we have in Guyana a number of um, potential new experiences, we also see that as a, 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 you know, an established destination, a mature destination, that we can support the development of the sector in, in Guyana. And in doing that, the issue of training as it relates to tourism and hospitality is one area in which significant collaboration can take place. Uh, we believe that Guyana can access from Barbados in a number of areas, training opportunities in, in respect, for example, of quality assurance, uh, the training of service providers at every level. Uh, examples would be housekeepers, front office personnel, uh, persons involved in, in you know, 
catering, um, training of chefs and, and support staff in that area. Um, we also are aware that Guyana is seeking to, working very hard at establishing a hospitality institute and in the process of doing that, we also can share our experience in the establishment and operation of the Tomarine Hospitality Institute. And critical to that, of course, would be training of trainers, persons who would return to the country. We also see potential in the area of agro-tourism and strategies that are uh, likely uh, that we've identified and we will negotiate will be the attachment of service providers to hotels in Barbados. We in Barbados have a range of hotels from five diamond through to small family run operations. And to that end, we think that it is critical that there be that exposure. In addition to exchanges and, and attachments, we also believe that there is clear room for the use of ICTs. Um, the use of technology can also facilitate the delivery of training and that is one of the areas in which we, we have to do. I believe I could say something about the matter of immigration and security. Obviously, at um, the heart of this would be the movement of people. And I, I also would want to indicate that we have agreed as ministers that an MOU will be concluded to cover the various modalities which govern the relationship between our two countries as it relates to immigration. In essence, let me say that this sometime in the past used to be considered uh, an issue for our countries. Um, and as the person who would, since um, the change of government in 2008, would have been the first minister responsible for immigration, I would want to say that we, we would have gone through a period where the media, and uh, since I'm talking to the media, I will have to say we've got where the media sought to play up issues which arose from time to time. And uh, I can also say that Minister Rodriguez Burkett and myself would have dealt with those. But just to illustrate the long-standing um, good relations we've had, I will just cite for you a couple of examples because we would have heard about refusals. But to cite some statistics, in 2008, we would have had arriving from Guyana 31,000 276 Ghanaians. In that same year, we would have had departing 27,158 and a refusal of 610 persons. So if you can quickly do a calculation and divide 610 with 31,276, you can tell me how big that number is. The point I'm making is that um, very quickly we recognize that there has been and will continue to be the very easy flow of persons between our countries. That, of course, is at the heart of tourism. And therefore, I just put into bed the notion that uh, we, we somehow have had difficulties in the past. I would also want to touch, as we talk about tourism and hospitality, I mentioned the, the issue of um, the, the plans to develop training institutions. That is something which we as a government has undertaken. And a question that was posed to me earlier, uh, and I would, I would reference that, was our government's decision to invest in hotel plant. Um, and we have done it. What I can tell you is this is something that we've done in the past, and we, we have decided to do again as a part of a long, short, medium, and long-term strategy. Uh, clearly, government sometimes has to be the catalyst for new investment, or in the case of our current economic situation, the catalyst for re-energizing a sector. So in response to that, and I'm sure you'll hear more about that, but that is something I wanted to flag, because that is all part of building and sustaining the industry. We also agree that we are going to offer some scholarships to uh, Barbados for the Ghana School of Agriculture, uh, five scholarships uh, to Barbadian students to study at our Ghana School of Agriculture. And on the Barbadian side, uh, they have some experience with uh, pork production and uh, black belly sheep. And we have uh, some experience as well in black belly sheep rearing. And we will be working with Barbados uh, in this area as well. Our hydromet officers uh, will be attached 
uh, a few of them to the Bar Barbados Hydromet office. Uh, we would work in that area. Barbados um, has more experience in this area and we can learn from them. We also agree in the area of education that integration is about people and we would like from a very young age our students learning more about the Caribbean, learning more about Tarotum, uh, learning more about their neighbors. And in this regard, we would have uh, twinning of schools and exchange programs between schools in Barbados and schools in Guyana. And this would uh, happen with, within the next year. We're hoping to have uh, our first visit. But not only students, we would also be working with the teachers uh, the exchange of teachers. Barbados is, has uh, much experience with their polytechnics and so our technical institutes would also be working with their Barbadian counterpart in terms of curriculum and Barbados has a lot of experience in, in various areas offering online courses as well and they have agreed to share with us that experience.